Hey everyone, my name is Julian. I am from Piab, and I'm going to be talking about vacuum pumps and reducing noises, uh, reducing noise in, in vacuum applications. So, a little bit about Piab, uh, I, as I would probably think in this audience that, apart from my friend from the HSC, that nobody's heard of us. <laughs> Spot on. Okay, so this is what Piab does. We basically allow people to grip and move things in industrial applications. So as you'll see there, suction cups on the ends of robots for moving things about. Uh, we move material, uh, bulk ingredients, things like that, mechanical gripping, and also ergonomic manipulators. So that's the corporate part. Uh, as I said, complete line of all those different items, and that's our main uh, business, is helping customers solve their gripping and moving challenges. And this is where you'll find us in a typical production process. So you can see there, that's all the different kinds of uh, items that we do, and sort of an example of, of where you'll find us. So we've got a global reach. We uh, cover more than 70 countries, uh, 1,100 distributors worldwide, uh, 170 technical salespeople. That's gone up recently, so that's probably near 200. Uh, if you look on our website, pyab.com, you'll find uh, all our products and various case studies, white papers and things like that on energy saving and vacuum. Or gloss over the short lead time. You're not interested in that. Uh, the UK office uh, is in Loughborough. That's where our UK base is. That's where we have a uh, technical office with uh, demonstration areas, uh, test areas for uh, vacuum conveyors and ergonomic lifters, and also where uh, the vacuum automation team, the vacuum pump side, is based, which I am part of. So the way we work in vacuum applications, we have four specialists covering the UK. Uh, we basically uh, go into potential customers, we review the application, work with them, identify the best solution. Generally, that's by finding out what their biggest pain is. Now, so we can say we can reduce noise, but that might not be the biggest pain. So it might be the best way to actually get that solution into the customer is by saying you can save this much on energy or you can save this much on maintenance. So that's, that's the key bit, is finding the biggest pain, as well as finding your way to the person that write this, writes the checks, of course. Uh, so to do that, we can support business cases with uh, energy saving information and return on investment. Uh, if that helps the, the contact you'll see and actually put his business case through. And our products carry a five year warranty, so that generally helps. Okay, so I'll move on to vacuum pumps and common types found in industrial applications. Uh, these are the ones we come across most, uh, electromechanical vein pumps. So they will need to run continuously regardless of vacuum demand. So you don't need vacuum necessarily for industrial applications all the time, but you can't switch those on and off when you need them. You've got to keep them running. Uh, continuous high noise levels, so that's of course the important one here today. Uh, they also have moving wear parts that break down. So for example, you see those are those unaware, those veins are actually wear parts and as that rotates, that's what helps create the vacuum. Oops, sorry, missed one there. Um, they're normally large and heavy. Now, I've come across a lot of these Sometimes they're at the sides of machines, so particularly some of the large ones where you, you could be talking about something that sort of size, and they're on the floor because that's obviously the easiest place to put them. In some applications, they may be slightly smaller, but you also tend to find them on the top of machines uh, nearer the point of actual demand, so that can be very difficult for, for maintenance staff to actually get them down in order to actually work on them so uh, the uh, there is manual handling challenges to, to those pumps as well 
Uh, now moving on to compressed air driven solutions, which is our main area. Uh, this is a single stage Venturi, so this is the old traditional way of generating vacuum through a compressed air. So for every unit of compressed air you chuck in, it generates about half that amount in vacuum flow. So they operate only when needed, so instant vacuum on demand, so they can be quite small depending on the application. But the inefficiency is the big thing. They use more air than the vacuum you generate. And they are also very noisy. And can, a lot of them are over 90 decibels. Now this is where PIAB comes in as our technology, as we'll, see, we'll go on to, is based on multi-stage Venturis. Uh, in this case, you can see, rather than just the single stage, you've actually got three. So as the air goes through, vacuum is actually drawn in through those little, well, these are little rubber flaps. So one unit compressed air, three units of vacuum flow, so you get a lot more flow. Noise level, typically 70 uh, as a bare cartridge. That's before you put it in a housing. Uh, but also an efficient generator of blow air. I mean, we've been talking about some blow air applications earlier on. Uh, in this case, as you can see, you compressed air as it goes in. Most of it ends up coming out, but you get all this extra air that's drawn in for free. So you get more volume of air out at the back end. So you can also use these for blow. And we have a patented cartridge design called Coax in various sizes and types to suit different applications. So why do we use these coax cartridges? You can put multiple cartridges in a pump body to match the needs of the application. So if you have an application that doesn't need very much air, you can use just one cartridge. If you have an application that needs quite a lot, then you can add cartridges. So you can make it bespoke for the application. So again, you're using the least amount of energy to do the job. So there are also different versions for different applications, whether you need high flow. So that would be things like uh, operating when you're picking up cardboard, which is porous. So you need a high vacuum flow to be able to grab hold of it. Or a high vacuum level application would be once you've got hold of it, how hard are you gripping it? So that would be, for instance, if you're in a furniture factory and they're doing routing operations on, on a large wooden panel. Uh, there's no wear parts, so there's no maintenance costs. There's no heat generated. And the biggie for today, low noise. So on to some examples of our pumps. Uh, this is the one that would be the, uh, the one that would replace a lot of the larger style vein pumps. Uh, to give you an idea of size, it's about that big by about that square. So you can replace something that's a huge electric vein pump like that with something much smaller. Uh, this one holds up to 16 cartridges. You'll see from the line drawing there, you can see the cartridges in there. Uh, vacuum flow, just to give you an idea, up to 345 meters cubed an hour. Now uh, that equates roughly to a vein pump of 11.6 kilowatt electrical power. And the noise range, depending on how many cartridges you have in, obviously more cartridges, more noise, uh, somewhere between 56 and 76 decibels for these pumps. And if you fit a silencer, then you get a further noise reduction. Now that's the bare pump before you actually add any pipe work to it. So in this case, your compressed air goes in here and your actual vacuum connection is on this end. So by the time you add pipe work to that, then any induction sucking noise from that pump is actually reduced. So in your actual application, it could actually be quieter than that. Uh, some other PIA pumps. Pi Classic is uh, a smaller pump with one to six cartridges. We've got some energy saving functions added to that to help reduce air use even further. Um, that's typically 64 to 69 decibels. I'll show you an example of that coming up. Uh, this is the newest one, uh, Pi Compact Smart. Uh, this has 
uh, electronic control valves and circuitry in the end of it so it's not just a dumb vacuum pump you put air to and control elsewhere uh, 50 to 52 decibels so very quiet that's the silencer on the side of it there that helps uh, achieve that but uh, I don't know if anyone's heard the buzzword industry 4.0 a few and few nods and <laughs> yeah um, this basically there's technology in there so that should you wish to a user or a machine builder can wire that up to their control system so it will tell them when the filters getting blocked it will tell them if it's taking longer than necessary to generate the vacuum so it gives you a way of condition monitoring And then we have our VGS series, which is the most energy efficient way of using vacuum because you're generating the vacuum literally right at the suction cup. Uh, three sizes of that, and again, depending on size, then the noise varies between 55 and 69 decibels. So you can see they're generally a lot quieter than the, uh, the electric driven alternative or the single nozzle Venturi alternative. A couple of energy features, energy saving features, sorry, that also help. Uh, we have uh, regulators that control the vacuum level. And the reason for that is you might not need a deep level of vacuum for your application. Again, a typical one is uh, packaging, cardboard boxes, things like that. Because they're porous, you won't get much more than 40% vacuum. So why not have one of these on your pump so you can control the level to about 40% rather than having your pump that's capable of 70-80% vacuum, just using extra air and using extra energy it doesn't need. And of course that also makes it quieter. And that's basically how it does it. It reduces the compressed airflow uh, delivered to the pump uh, to maintain the set level. Also have controls and vacuum to, uh, controls and valve, sorry, to hold vacuum. So they're typically used on non-porous parts cuts the air off completely at a set level. And then we have check valves and suction cups as well. So basically what you can do is if you have an array of cups and before the, the cups actually come down and touch, you don't have that sucking noise because there's a little valve in them that shuts. And as soon as it makes contact with, uh, with the actual product and there's no flow anymore, that little rubber flap opens and you get your suction. So the Controls and valves to hold vacuum, those are, uh, are particularly important in safety applications where, for instance, car manufacturers with windscreens and those large, nice, large glass panoramic sunroofs that uh, people like to have. Uh, you can imagine if the line stops and the robot that's putting those in happens to be hanging there with, with a few thousand pounds worth of very large glass sunroof hanging off. Um, the compressed air happens to go. You need to maintain that vacuum level, otherwise you end up with a very big mess. So uh, safety applications, that's, uh, those are a very good thing. Now just moving on to a few examples. Uh, this is an application in the print industry. Uh, that is a, for those that don't recognize it, that's a Bob's 2000 automatic die cutter. So that's basically taking your large sheets of corrugated cardboard in uh, putting fold lines in, crease lines in. Some of these machines also print on as well. Uh, that did have a, a, a large Bush 11 kilowatt vein pump, which I haven't got a picture of sadly, but what they've replaced it with is one of our P6040 pumps. That was the first one I showed you and it's smaller brother. I didn't show you the P6010. So that behind that pipe work there is the P6040. So that's supplying the vacuum. And that one there's the P6010, so that's the blow. So basically at, at various points in the process when the cardboard sheet goes through the machine, it either needs holding down so it can be cut or it needs blowing to help lift it up and move it along to the next bit of the process. Now this is their figures. They cut their noise to a quarter of the previous level. Save 20% on energy and £3,000 a year on maintenance costs. That's purely as there's no moving parts in that, so the only thing they need to do is change the filter occasionally. 
this is a packaging machine application, and this is literally holding down cardboard boxes. Uh, this is in a uh, factory in South Wales that, it, that manufactures uh, not very environmentally friendly single-use plastic cups. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this machine here is basically this. This is where those cups are, there, are actually put into the box. So the box is erected, moved across, and that vacuum pump is holding down these boxes while the the, the cups are packed into it. So that's our Pi Classic pump with that's the energy saving attachment on it, the energy saving valve to set the level, and they saved uh, they reckon around about eleven hundred pound a year in in maintenance costs. Uh, just for fitting that. Uh, they were so pleased with the first one, they then went on and, and put uh, replaced some of their other vein pumps with uh, with our pumps. Uh, slightly different application. You might recognise that. That's your slide raft on your aircraft. Sorry? Hopefully, you, yeah, hopefully you've never seen one in action. <laughs> But uh, yeah, basically this is a, a British Airways maintenance base. Uh, from time to time they have to take these off the doors and actually inflate them to check they do work. Uh, but then you can imagine the small size they then need to get them back down to in order to get them to fit back in the doors. And it's the same thing with life rafts on ferries and, and, and other maritime uh, vessels. So this is what they were using. A very large industrial vacuum cleaner that was literally, I think it's coming back to your, your original slide, was like an air raid siren. And uh, that's what they replaced it with a small four cartridge pump, uh, again with a little regulator on there. So it, when it reaches a certain vacuum level, it shuts off. Uh, so, n not the tidiest, and certainly from a trip hazard point of view, not the. Uh, <laughs> I could just, yeah, see all the HSE based people go <laughs> not the best way but uh, you can you can see it's uh, it's certainly reduced the, uh, the size uh, reduced their energy and, and drastically reduced the noise so, uh, uh, just to give you a, another cost saving example uh, this was a customer who had a, a three kilowatt vein pump process only needed back in 50 percent of the time 12 hour production six days a week they were paying 11 pence a kilowatt hour for electric annual running cost of that pump if it was running 100 percent efficiently uh, was 1235 pound power equivalent pump uh, working on compressed air and only being on as and when it works 713 pound so there we go there's the saving so this is where I'm at about with just perhaps that might be the best way to sell the the actual change to the bean counters in the in the end end user, but it might also get you the benefits of the noise and everything else that you're the one that actually wants. So to summarise, we can reduce noise. Simple as that, really. <laughs> uh, provide better energy efficiency. That's our our, our personal main driver as a company. Uh, reduce operating costs for end users and reduce maintenance costs. Uh, that's the, the big benefits we uh, try and provide. Thank you very much.